Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Brecken? Here. Moore? Here. Chainer? Here. We stand for a moment of silence for her, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Jennifer McCabe. Good, very good, thank you. We have a proclamation that reads, whereas brain injury is a serious public health epidemic affecting at least 5.3 million American livings with long-term disability. And whereas an estimated 2.4 million children and adults in the U.S. sustain a traumatic brain injury, and another 795,000 individuals sustain an acquired brain injury from non-traumatic causes each year, and currently more than 3.1 million children and adults in the U.S. live with a lifelong disability as a result of traumatic brain injury. Many of our soldiers have reported symptoms related to concussion and brain injury, including slow thinking, memory loss, sleep disturbance, attention and concentration deficits, and brain injuries, which is a leading cause of disability among soldiers returning to their communities. Whereas a concussion is also a serious brain injury that can occur without loss of consciousness and can occur in any sport. And recognition and proper management of concussions when they first occur can help prevent further injury or even death. And as many as 3.8 million sports and recreation related concussions occur in the United States each year. Now, therefore, I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, on behalf of City Council, do hereby proclaim March 2020 as National Brain Injury Awareness Month in Sioux City and encourage all our citizens to enhance public awareness of traumatic brain injury and salute the mission of the Brain Injury Association of Iowa. I'd like to present this to you and say a few words if you would. Super. Well, thank you very much. Opportunities Unlimited has been uh, providing services in the Siouxland community for over 25 years. We were founded by a number of local families who had had children with brain injuries. Um, and we are a mission-based organization who <coughs> serves over 200 individuals each year. Committed to brain injury and other special needs, we work diligently to provide excellent rehabilitation and residential services in our nine homes, which are located on the north side of Sioux City. Last year, we opened a new line of service called Community-Based Neurobehavioral Rehabilitation Services. This has allowed us to further support the continuum of care and provide a need of brain injury services within the state of Iowa. In effort to promote awareness and prevention, we also have created a program called Got a Brain, Get a Helmet. This is something that we have created our own curriculum, and it's a program that has shared with local schools and second graders here in Sioux City. We follow up the educational piece with an assembly, and through a grant funded by Dairy Queen both last year and again this year, we're gonna be able to provide helmets to every single second grader in Siouxland. Wow. Last year we provided over 1,300 helmets in our district. Um, we're really proud of the work that our organization provides and the difference that we make. We're grateful to have the support of so many within our community. We also provide home and community-based services to children and adults with special needs. These are offered at OU and throughout the community and in the privacy of individuals' homes. We also have two waiver homes where we serve an additional eight individuals from our community. Again, we want to thank the council for your acknowledgement for Brain Injury Awareness Month. It's nice to know that right here in our community, there is a place that excels in the care of individuals with brain injuries. Um, nobody ever plans to wake up and to experience a brain injury. So again, we know that this can happen and we're glad that we're able to provide this needed services, service to individuals in, the, in our community. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank keep you. up the thank good work, we appreciate it. Okay, well, we'll go to uh, interviews for city council, appointed boards and commissions, Company Civil Service Commission, Michael McLennan. Michael, are you here? Come to the microphone, please, and state your qualifications to serve. How's that sound? Hi, I'm Michael McLennan. Uh, I guess my qualifications that I've been a civil service employee for, or was a civil service employee for almost 35 years, 
I understand the process somewhat from that side. I'm not going to say I'm an expert on it. Um, and I just want to keep serving the city if I can in whatever ways I can. I think it's an important commission that has a lot of responsibility, and I think I could do a good job helping them. Questions? Um, Mike, I, I know that uh, I agree with you that it is a very important position. I'm the council's representative on the Civil Service Commission and, and go to all of their meetings and, and been doing it for the last six years. But uh, I have been asked by at least one member of the commission and as, as uh, uh, an effort to identify, I know that uh, how serious you are about attending meetings. I know that's one of the questions and you said, yes, you won't have any problems getting to the meetings. But I want to emphasize how important the Civil Service Commission is and how they, you know, they're, they're used to identify uh, eligible uh, applicants uh, mm -hmm. for city employment, uh, to do personnel issues, to do testing issues. Um, and and uh, I can tell you in six years, and for the council's information, <clears throat> I have yet to see a full Civil Service Commission ad adjourned for a meeting yet. There's always something going on, and, and it's, a, it's a challenge for them to keep up. So I'm just asking, I want to make sure you're aware of what you're getting into, because it's one of the commissions uh, uh, that really keeps very active. They all do, but this one really works a little bit more, it seems to me. And uh, I just want to make sure, again, that you know and you're willing to serve and... Uh, we, you'll be there in attendance at meetings. I will, I will make every effort to attend every meeting there, that they have. I'm not going to say I'm going to be at 100%. No. Nope. I'd be foolish for saying that. Yep, I wouldn't want I you to, but I... I would make every effort to be there. Yeah, more than anything else, I just want to make sure that uh, applicants understand how important this commission really is. Thank you. Any Thanks. other questions? Thank you for your oh, interest. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Chase Stockton Tourism. Well, I guess events facility, you're pretty much in charge of tourism now. Was Dwight or something? What's that? He's going to reschedule. Oh, yes. I didn't see that. Or no, he asked to have his application withdrawn. Right. I'm sorry. Dwight did? did? Yes. Okay. Okay, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve. Yep, my name is Chase Stockton. I am currently director of sales over at the Stony Creek Hotel and Conference Center in Sioux City. Uh, lifelong Sioux Lander and um, been around, like I say, the business side of Sioux City for quite a while between commercial print over at the casino and now in the hospitality industry. Uh, the opportunity to be on a board um, such as this, that being that we're neighbors with the Tyson Event Center and that um, the city of Sioux City with the new hotels going up, I think the common misunderstanding is we have a bunch of hotels, but when it comes to citywide events, we need everyone to work together to bring these big city events to the city. And so um, I'm hoping that I can come on and hopefully have some good insight to contribute to the group. Thanks for making some application. This is somewhat deceptive. It's really not the tourism advisory board. Correct. So I just want to make sure he understands this is for the facilities. This is not for tourism. We're setting up an entirely different tourism board. Correct. Yeah, just so you know, those are two different ones right now. There's a regional tourism board um, that has representatives with hospitality and things like that. The one that you applied for does have that branch as well. It just coordinates efforts and works with um, the properties that the city owns, talking about advice, coordinating schedules, working on things, improving how we can make the best of our, our facilities. Sure thing. And it oversees, doesn't it also provide back an in input to the actual? Yep. Okay. Yep. You're exactly right. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. We're going to move to the agenda today. Uh, consent agenda today is items 3 through 10H. Consider these items to pass unless a separate roll call vote is requested by a council member. If you want to speak on one of these items or any item on the agenda, please come up as I read that number. State your name and address so it can be recorded. And if you want to come up under something not on the agenda, come up under citizen concerns. And again, please state your name and address. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. <clears throat> Three is a reading of the city council minutes of February 24, 2020. Four is a resolution temporary closing various streets in downtown area March 9th and 10th for the Orpheum Symphony Kids Concert. 
five is a resolution inviting proposals for the sale of land in the Downer Park Urban Renewal Area announcing the intent to accept the proposal of Koskovich and Murphy Development and scheduling a hearing. The property is 5304 Al Haynes Drive. Six is a resolution fixing the amount to be assessed against private property for the weed abatement program. Seven is a actions relating to grants. A is a resolution approving a grant agreement with HUD for the family self-sufficiency program. B is a resolution approving a work, work order for RS and H for assistance with the North Ramp Hangar Development Grant application. Eight are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving consulting services agreement with DGR Engineering for the Leach Avenue re re Reconstruction and Ingleside Avenue Reconstruction projects. B is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Strong Construction for the Riverside Pool Concrete and Canopy Project. C is a resolution approving an amendment to the consulting services agreement with certified testing for the military road reconstruction and bridge rehabilitation project. D is resolution approving an assignment and an assumption of agreements between Merge and Urban 1220. Marty, why would, uh, why would they not accept the recommendation of the city attorney? I kind of have to agree with the city attorney. We, we, we make a deal with the group, and then the, I understand why the group would want to change that, but then you're, you're basically going with a shell corporation. You have no guarantee they're going to build, but you've got all these incentives out there. So They can transfer that to anybody. Well, they, they're transferring it to a related, a related group. We made, this, we made this deal based upon a company that we know a, a little bit about. I mean, I understand why they want to do it that way, but I'm not sure that that's in the best interest of the city. Well, I, I guess um, it's the same uh, developer, basically. They, they set up a tip. Marty, you're smart enough to know one company's got assets, one company doesn't. There's a big difference. I understand what you're saying, but don't, don't try to tell me they're the same, because they're not. So, um, they're, they're not. They, this has the investors in it. And we had long discussions with their attorney and our attorneys, and um, we've, um, they're telling us the uh, financing that they have and the investors that they have are preferring to do it this way. And um, we think any city risk is pretty minimal. We're not selling the land. Um, and our primary uh, involvement here is on rebates. We do have a a reimbursement from brownfield funds, but that only happens after the building is constructed. So if they it was shown you minimal. that they have secured financing for the project, have they shown you they have bona fide secure financing for the project? Well, Chris, you want to answer that? Um, um, no, I I haven't seen that they have. When, when they, that. They, don't Wouldn't that have helped satisfy your legal department's concern if they would have seen that? I mean, it would mine if I knew they had a bank financing that was signed off on. And I will point out that the provision in question, which states without relieving assigners from liability under either agreement, is actually still in the agreement that was executed and presented to council. Um, so I think we need some clarification. Um, the legal department's recommendation is that, that be the version that is approved by council, um, and that's the version that's before council. So if there's a request to remove that language, um, that would have to occur on the floor today. That's not what they understand. Signed agreement that was presented still includes the language that legal would like to see. They haven't signed it. The yes, they've signed it. They signed it. They signed it. They signed it and returned it and requested that we consider removing the language, which legal did not agree with. So is that going to kill the deal? They had signed it and sent it to us um, with that language still in there, um, hoping that we, that if council approved removing the language, that, that then we could, we could use that to... Uh... Well, I guess I'd be inclined to remove it once we see that they actually have the project financed down the road. <clears throat> We can approve it today and you can bring it back later. We could amend it at that point. Right. We, 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 can, requ we can request pr proof of financing. They've, they've told us that they have their investors secured. and I'm sure and they do, but I want to. 
Okay. I just want to see it. Sure. I don't know if the rest of you, if you're okay with yeah. it, then remove no, it No, I'm fine Thank seeing you. that. Okay. Tell them that all we want to do is make sure they're ready to go and they got it ready to okay. shovel right. in the ground. Mm -hmm. And Marty, one other thing while we're on this item too, if you can encourage the developers to talk to area property owners, I know specifically across the street, some individuals were reaching out to me, just asking about the parking and what they thought that was going to look like. They're just concerned about their clientele as well. I understand. Um, actually, last week, and Je Jeff was involved in this, um, and I attended this meeting, they sent uh, like a whole team of people here, their architect, planner, landscape architect, whole team of people to review the site plan ahead of the DRC. And right. um, there we discussed the parking issue and what they would have to do to show that there's adequate parking in the area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, they're very yeah, willing Jeff to, and I had talked about that. They planned on talking to the <clears throat> people in the area and maybe securing some other parking as part of that. So we had a, quite an extensive discussion about that with their their team, I guess. They sent a whole bunch of people. Yeah, that, that's great. I had, I had heard from this person at Innovation Market, actually, so it's been a little while, so maybe they've been contacted. Right, so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Nine are applications for beer liquor license. See the list come forward. 10, receipt of minutes. See the list come forward. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? Passes 5011 is an ordinance re rezoning 4001 and 4003 Military Road. Petitioner Al Fagan, PNZ recommends approval. First consideration approved February 24, two, 2020. Staff recommends approving second reading only. I'll move that. Second. Jeff Hansen, Community Development Operations Manager. Unfortunately, the petitioner, the property owner, and the surveyor were not able to make today's meeting. We did have a follow up meeting since our last uh, first reading occurred last week. Uh, if I can have the screen turned on, Lisa, quick. I just want to show that there's progress being made. The surveyor has gone out to the site and uh, has completed some topo work to show the drainage in the corner. And I can. This is existing topo to show how the drainage currently flows in the what I'll call the northeast quarter of the subdivision in question. It's the southwest corner of the intersection of West 30th and uh, Hale Street running to the north. This is what's considered to be Bennington Road as it goes to the west as well. So they have gone out and done some in initial investigation on stormwater flow to show that it does flow into that ditch. Um, we're still working out other issues as far as stormwater on the individual sites. We're still working out access agreements. So at this time, we'd only recommend second reading and allow us to continue to make some progress with the property owner. Anyone want to be heard? Come on up. State your name and address, please. Jeremy Kleinschmidt, 4000 Bennington Road. So it flows to the ditch now, correct? Correct. So when you put that road in off of 30th to come to into that drainage ditch, where is that water going to go when you create that dam? And I think that still needs to be worked out in the design of the potential driveway, and it would come along with the building permit. As you can see here, the south side of that road is approximately 1282. As it comes through here, it's 1280, and it drains out underneath the road at 1276. So I would agree with you, as this driveway is constructed, he currently has the existing entrance shown. If there's any type of infrastructure installed there, as far as culverts, piping, whatever it may be, they would have to engineer and review that here internally to make sure that it doesn't impact any adjacent property owners as well as affecting that street. They would continue to have that flow going to this ditch, which we saw earlier. But right now we're in the platting rezoning process. The driveway has not been engineered, so that would come at a later date. So if, when that property gets sold, you, am I right on saying you don't have to have a grading permit for a residential lot? or do you have to have a grading permit for a residential lot? You do not. A grading permit is issued with the building permit when it's pulled. If they do any additional grading before the building permit's pulled, then they would need a separate grading permit. Okay, so typically when the grading or when the permit's pulled, you're going to do grading for the driveway and stuff. Who's to say they're not going to take that 1280 
and go to 1282. And block the water? Huh? Yeah, and block the water. Block. There's nothing in writing saying that's going to do that. When that happens, you're, the guy that, Mike Rubel, that's on the other side of 30th is going to get water in his basement, period. The road already slopes to there. It does slightly, correct. It slopes to the north slightly, today. I mean, it slopes. Yeah. Water is going to follow that, no matter if it's slightly or major. Again, at the time of the submittal for the building permit and the driveway design, we would want to review that to ensure there's no impacts to adjacent property owners. That's all I can say at this time. Without having a design in front of us with a driveway, I can't say how they uh, will impact that water flow. But you Am I right? And so what he's asking is when would we be able to look at that, you know what I mean, before moving forward? Yeah, what I, could we do to reassure him that once the property is sold that they are going to make those changes? The I mean, only thing I could say is we could put some contingency on it that the next time it's reviewed at the plat stage, which would be, you know, next week, I doubt they would have time to design a driveway. But if they could design us a driveway to show that the uh, stormwater flow is not being changed in any direction, and include it on a plat, that would be the only assurance we have. But until then, we wouldn't see that until we have a building permit. And then also the 12, 1276.5, who's to say that that homeowner that bought that lot is not going to, you know, potentially, if they build that up for the driveway, is going to potentially fill that up halfway. I'm saying with the rain we have in the spring, the guy that's on the downhill side of it is here, and it... The, it, they're maxed out as far as the rain water it can hold right now. He will have water in his basement. Last spring he had water in his basement. So why would we approve it to go to the next hearing when we don't even, know, I mean, have information of what's, what are we going to do to prevent it? What are we going to do when the landowner buys that land and doesn't need a grading permit? And does all that work. We need, but but, but he, we can put that contingency <clears throat> on there. The problem is we can't say what it's going to be until we see what it's going to be. So we can put that contingency on there. And from my vantage point, I, I'm not all excited about this, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you can require a detention pond down below as part of the building permit to stop that. And... I'm not as concerned up above as I probably should be because it still looks like if you did this right, you could put a culvert underneath there and it could still flow out and back around. It would seem to me on that driveway, but. Just with the, the lay of the land, putting a culvert, great idea, but you'd have to have a pretty substantial size of one to make it work without it being, I mean, it's. I, I get that, but it can be done. I'm just saying that that part's not, the up above is not as big a concern as if they change that grade because it is pretty flat there. And so if you change that at all, it's gonna go the other way. And I don't, this is, to me, there's some lots that shouldn't be developed. And I hate to say that because we need developable lots, but this one just, it's hard to, but I'm willing to go until we see what, <coughs> processes where they're going to put I don't even know what, how they're going to grade the road to the other lot or where yeah. or where I mean it would seem to me the further off the <coughs> road you make that road the better off you are because it gives more internal storage of water on their lot rather than up above on the street I mean at this stage I have a hard time believing that the engineer hasn't thought about what the road ought to look like I'm sorry but I'm just not buying that. I don't know why we don't have a, a road layout yet. Well, they're working on that as well? They are working on that as well. So the second hearing, again, would only be for item number 11, the rezoning. Item 12, we're I, working I, I understand that, yeah, but it's all tied together to me. It I know what the attorney's going to tell me. We can't talk about it and all that stuff. But you know what? You're asking neighbors to agree to something that in... Quite frankly, I'm a little disappointed the developer couldn't send one representative here today. So he's not showing a lot of interest in this thing either, if that's the case, or he just thinks he's got it through the city council. Maybe he does. I'm, I'm all for building. I just want to make sure the drainage I, I is addressed. Yeah, you just want to make sure the drainage yeah, why, gets, I don't, right gets addressed now, properly. Right, right now, one, one neighbor gets water in his basement. The other one, the guy is real close to it. Yeah. And I, from my experience, you do what we're doing, 
or plan to do, two neighbors will have water in their basements for sure. Well, I think anything can be engineered, but you got to know what that engineer looks like. So. Yeah, right. So is there a way, Jeff, I mean, you, we could pass the second, but then if we're not convinced and the third, then we can defer it or? Exactly. I mean, that's what, does that make sense? It's like, we can approve it, and if they don't come back and meet your, or satisfy your demands, or what we're looking for, or what any of us voting are for, then we can defer the item, and look, you have to do more engineering. You're gonna have to show us what that, and convince the neighbors, as well as the council, that we're not gonna have water in their basement. You know what I mean? At least then it buys I, I, time. I agree with you, but I think something should have been done already prior to this, to this stage of the game of their, <clears throat> what, what, are, what are they gonna do to prevent it? Well, they're, they're not gonna get third reading. That's what they're gonna right. do. Right, I'm just, and I agree. Someone should have been here to ask questions as well. Um, All right, anyone else be heard? I'm Edward Knapp, and I live at 2907 Alaska Street. And uh, you all remember what happened last March with the frozen ground and the snow and the rainfall? Well, what happened there was the water came down, and there was in behind my house there, they've got that terraced up. And that's come, water comes in there from three sides, and it all enters right there. And it hits that road at West 30th Street there. And it comes around the road ditch and comes down my, in front of my yard. And that road ditch is right now is like three foot or four, five foot wide and probably three or four foot deep. And it filled that up. And then the only other problem that you had is once the water came around and came down with the driveways there going down Alaska Street, create, created another natural dam. So all that water backed up on Alaska Street. So Alaska Street became a river, and then it backed up into my yard, and that's when I got the water. So even if you settle the problem there at that corner, you still got the problem get the water away down to military. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thanks. Jim Bilsland, uh, 2924 Alaska Street. Uh, I got a picture I'd like to show you here. Turn the light on, Jeff. It's cool. <clears throat> the focus on yeah, there's big buttons there this is right in front of my house in the middle of the main block of Alaska Street that's what it looked like 24 hours ago that it doesn't handle traffic real well uh, most of the there's two roads to get there one on each side of my block the other side uh, the other road has tighter corners and there's one stretch of it about a block long that's too narrow for two vehicles to meet, so though anybody that learns the road will take the wider road here. Uh, there's two culverts within a block of that spot we're talking about uh, at the beginning of the road there, and uh, the culverts are not large enough to handle any increased water. Water often runs over the driveways, and so more water would pretty much wash out their driveways, so that uh, not, won't work very well as issued. <clears throat> and on the, where this water begins to come out onto the road, uh, there's no ditches on the north side of it. So all the water will have to stay in the ditch that's there, the one on the south side of the road. And it's uh, probably more water than we can handle. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, Jeff, I'm just curious, at what point does the uh, maintenance plan, you recommended uh, approval of a maintenance plan, proper maintenance plan for that area. At what point does that get worked into this? Will that have an impact on the road this gentleman just talked about? The 
The area that we're discussing on the maintenance plan is what's referred to as Bennington Road, which is a continuation of West 30th Street further to the west, and it works its way to the north, uh, traveling this way, and it accesses several other properties to the northwest. That is the uh, road segment that, as you recall, in the early 80s, there was a resolution passed by council that removed all maintenance from that road other than snow removal. So we're just discussing a maintenance program from here further on. I believe oh, okay. those photos that he's showing is on the existing gravel streets that are already maintained by the city. Right now, this section of road is not being maintained by the city at all. And that's the location of the picture we just saw? Uh, that no. would, I believe, no, back, that was back to the way. east. We are maintaining that road then? My understanding, okay. that's all been maintained by not very the well, no, uh, no, apparently not. Well, Mayor, I, I um, without the petitioner or the petitioner's agent being here and with the comments the adjacent property owners have made, I, I would prefer that we defer this for one week and not even do the second reading. I just think there are a lot of questions that are still raised that need to be addressed. So I would. I would move that we defer item 11, second reading, until March 9. We have a motion on the floor already, so. Uh, Make a motion to amend. Amend. Withdraw the current motion. Can't table it with a motion, can I? I'll move to, I mean, I'll accept that. I'll accept the withdrawal of whoever second it will. Uh, I'm not sure. I wouldn't accept that. So I would withdraw. Either way, give us more time. Then I'll make the motion. Yes. Made the motion. Okay. I'll make the motion to defer second. till March 9. And Alex seconded that. Okay, gotcha. Waters? Aye. Gretchen? Aye. Moore? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? I'll go ahead and vote aye. I'm probably not inclined to vote for this until we have a lot more answers and I don't think we're going to get those but we'll see 12 is resolution approving the final plan to offer the addition of petitioners out begging <clears throat> PNC recommends to deferred from January 27th February 10th and the 24th and I'll move we defer till the 9th second you may use your voting panels so sorry to make you come back another week but no action will be taken Well, it would Pass. be nice if they had some drawings. Pass five to zero. Thirteen is a hearing and resolution access, assessing a three hundred dollars civil penalty against Vi E Sigs and Vape Lounge thirty one thirty four Floyd Boulevard for violation of the Iowa liquor laws. I'll move that. Second. The public hearing is now open. Would anyone like to be heard? If so, please come to the microphone. Seeing none, the hearing is closed. The next Pete's starting to rub off on you. <laughs> <laughs> Passes 5 0. 14 is a hearing resolution on the issuance of GO bonds not to exceed 14 million. I'll move that. Second. Anyone to be heard? The hearing is now open. Seeing none, the hearing is closed. I want everybody to understand, I, don't, I wouldn't do it this way. We haven't for years, but the legal department now makes us do it, that, so it takes a little longer, but that's okay. We're doing it the right way now. <laughs> Passes 5-0. 15 is a hearing and resolution on the issuance of GO bonds not to exceed $9.5 million. I'll move that. Second. The hearing's now open. Anyone like to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. You do it so smoothly. <laughs> a lot smoother when we didn't have to do all this. Passes 5 0. 16 is a hearing and resolution on the issuance of GO bonds not to exceed a million dollars. So I'll move that. Second. The hearing is now open. Would anyone like to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5 0. 17 is a hearing and resolution on the issuance of GO bonds not to exceed $1 million. 
I'm, I'll move that. Second. The hearing's now open. Would anyone like to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5018 is a hearing resolu resolution on the issuance of GEO bonds not to exceed $700,000. I'll move that. Second. Anyone to be heard, the hearing is now open. Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Um, one moment, please. There you go. You may vote. Passes 5019 is a hearing resolution on the issuance of GO bonds not to exceed $600,000. I'll move that. Second. The hearing is now open. Anyone want to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5020 is a hearing resolution bonds on the issuance of geo bonds not to exceed five hundred and fifty thousand dollars i'll move that second the hearing is now open anyone like to be heard seeing none the hearing is closed Passes 5021 is a resolution authorizing the issuance of $24,820,000 worth of GEO bonds. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5022 is a motion authorizing the redesign of Swift Avenue in, connect, in conjunction with the South Fairmont Street Reconstruction Project. I'll move it. Second. All right. People here want to hear all about your project there. So, Gordon Fair, City Engineer. Uh, <clears throat> before you today is our redesign of Fairmont from Transit Avenue to Vine. This is our reconstruction where we're gonna replace all of the concrete, all of the paving, all of the sewer, water and sewer storm. Just an aerial photo for you, see what it looks like. Uh, something that we haven't come across before or in a while, that um, the K value or our site distance for the intersection of Peters and Fairmont, which is down there at the bottom of the screen that you can see, that um, the K value is at two. It's just a me measure of the vertical uh, curvature of the hill. And um, we need to raise that up to the actual design, which is 12, uh, currently it's two. And we'd like to get it up near 12, which is what is with the design standard would be. But the best we can do at this point would be getting up to about 7.2 <coughs> 7 at that point. If we increase, we raise the road uh, up a little bit, but in order to do that, let's go to the next slide, we'd like to abandon the portion of Swift Avenue between the alley and Fairmont. There's, there's, no, there's no utilities in there, uh, very low usage. Um, and we'd make a hammerhead type of cul-de-sac, if you, if you will, right there at that alley. In order to raise that road, go to the next slide, right there. We're going to add about four and a half feet of fill on that street to bring the elevation up so it'll increase the value, uh, the K value for our sight distance. It's all for safety. Mainly, so go back. It would start right around the crest of the hill, which is at Peters in Fairmont, extend north for, and it'd be raised up about four and a half feet, and then it would taper off to about the top of that aerial right there, down to nothing. 
the only property is it would affect, well, it doesn't really affect any of them uh, for the elevation change. Um, can you go to the aerials? Or not the aerial, but the, uh, the next few pictures. Next one. Uh, right there, as you can see, that's looking from Swift, looking south. It's about two, it's right there at the intersection. The street is our, uh, the property on the east side, which is on your left. That one's already higher, so it won't affect that one at all. The one on the west, it will slope down, but they'll get their access off of that cul-de-sac, if you will. Can I jump in? No, let him finish his presentation first. Um, that's what we're presenting to you there. We've got a few other photos. You can go back one. This is at the intersection of Peters. Um, and you can see that the sight distance is not excellent there. You have to really pull out into, on Peters, you have to pull out into the intersection so that you can see that you have clearance. That will increase the safety of anybody crossing there at Peters if we remove the swift intersection. Say that part again. Will you repeat it? When, you're, when you're, anybody's crossing, on Peter, crossing uh, Fairmont on Peters, when there's less chance of someone pulling out on Swift, when anybody's coming across to Fairmont, there'll be less chance of any kind of- I, I gotta get my bearings. Where's Robert Stadium? Back this way, right? Yeah, it's behind oh, okay. us on that. Okay, yeah, I know where you're at. Okay. And- uh, but that's, that's looking south, going up, looking up to Peters intersection from Swift. So it'd be to your left and forward more as the stadium. Oh, the stadium, yes. He was just, yeah. Yes, at Peters you would. You'd take the left and yes. go to the stadium. Right, go to the next slide. This is looking north about the same distance um, up to Peters intersection. It's just to kind of give you some perspective on how much of a blind hill that <clears throat> is. But I'm guessing that this is all over Sioux City. Yeah. Yes, it is. We're just, we're, we, uh, in order, for the funding that we get for this project. Where are we getting the funding? From the, uh, the state. Swap, these are swap dollars through the feds. So we, we're mandated to ma actually make some improvements other than just resurfacing and new, new uh, utilities. We want to make sure that we can make improvements on this intersection. Funding. I'm sorry, what? How much, how many dollars in federal funds are you getting? This oh, one sorry, this is Nate Wing. He's uh, one of the engineers. One block uh, stretch is a million two. It's about four blocks and it's about, I misspoke before, 1.8 million, I think is about the estimate for a two and a half million dollar project total. I gotta drive out here, I don't understand. Is that... I drive, yeah, I, I drive it pizza that. my whole life. I never remember that intersection being a, problem back when I was a kid, but things have, must have changed since I was 53 years ago when I delivered yeah. pizzas for Jerry's. <laughs> That's probably one of the most dangerous corners there is, because I live right Gordon. on the corner. Okay. Yeah, you do. Gordon, could you go back to the map? Yes. Would you go back to the map for a minute? Because is yours the railroad tie? The location house? map. Yes. I've been up to your place. Yeah. yeah. This one? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You, you talked about four and a half feet. Where, where are you raising that four and a half feet yeah, again? Right there from, uh, uh, I would say the halfway between Peters and Swift. It'll be peaking out there about four and a half feet <coughs> higher. Red box, Gordon? What's that? In the red box? No, no, no. That red box <coughs> is actually the part that we will vacate. It won't be a road. Make okay. that yeah. a okay. sellable It's lot. in the gray. It's in the gray then. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. talking about the street in the gray then? Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No, where's the four and a half feet gray? Right here. Oh, the area. One. Right. Uh, no, the on, uh, profile. This? No, Mayor. Right there. If you yeah. look at this profile right here, if you look at the profile, mm -hmm. right there at the very top of that hill, or that, that line, that's Peters. As you're going to the right, you're going north to Vine. On Fairmont. On Fairmont. This is the center line of Fairmont. It hey, would go back, please, to the... Can it's just, on the gray, right? Can you just point out, do you have the little mouse? The mouse, you can just point out where the four and a half. Yeah, right there. Uh, the, the thickest area 
where we'll add that four and a half foot of fill will be right yes. about where that South Fairmont Street label is mm -hmm. in that this vicinity. This is behind yes. the shopping center. Correct. So it's South Fairmont Street that's going the four and a half feet. Correct. Yes. And I'm the sorry, reason, yes. okay. And we want to eliminate the intersection with Swift because if we raise Fairmont up quite a bit, the we'll intersection with down Swift down. will become more unsafe we'll have sight to, distance. Well, four and a half good. feet, yeah, all the way right. it's four and a half feet? Uh, well, it so tapers, it's gradual, right. but at its thickest, it's four and a half foot. Of right all right there at feet. Swift, it's around two and a half to three feet. If we do that, then we're going to have to rebuild a, oh, is it about 150, 100, 150 feet. Yeah. We're going to have to. We're making it less steep. Less of a dip. Not vacate Swift, and with the elevation changes uh, at Swift, you would have so to it's not. direct about 150 yep. back to the west of Swift Avenue. Are you rebuilding Swift anyway, or just re closing it completely? Closing it and removing that concrete and making that what you call a hammerhead. So people can still have access on the alleys, both north and south. Like a little inlet or drive area. And that'll actually make it'll be a it'll be a like a cul de sac that fire trucks will never get around, but that's okay. Gordon doesn't care about those guys, so <laughs> they'd still be able to act. It's a hammerhead. They, no, they won't they could turn in and back in those big fire trucks in a call in a hammerhead, I guarantee you. No, but I meant it's half a block you would pull in if you needed to, or just alongside the house. Yeah. On either Fairmont or Lynn. Um, just before we get going, oh. hey, my name is Ray Bennett. Oh. I own a property at 1419 address, South Adrian, Fairmont. Address, please. Pardon me? Address, please. Home address 2105 South Lemon. Thank you. I own a property at 1419, and these gentlemen are property owners above the hill. Now, if he's going to take out Swift Street, you're going to make a cul de sac at the alley. You're going to build it up four and a half feet. Four feet, you say the, the dirt on the side to keep Fairmont going like this. Yes. What are you going to do about the properties running uh, on the flat land down there, you know, on Fairmont, say the corner, mm -hmm. let's say from Swift Street north? Yeah, you're the property. Oops, yeah. Right at the top. We're going to go right. to the Google there's Maps. The first on now. the corner, and mine's second, and, and he's third, and there's a, there's a ditch there, uh, uh, sewer, whatever you want to call it. It's an old waterway. Okay. Right there. That's it. That one. Now, what are they going to do with the streets from here? Are you going to raise this up too? This will be raised up just a, uh, a little bit, not much there. Maybe a what? Uh, by uh, this point, right about where the cursor is now, we are actually. Okay, because we've had that property for 50 street. years. See, my dad had that in 1970 and he used it for. What was your problem? The property. We've had that property for over 50 years and we never had any problems with it. Now they're going to tear us. We thought that you're going to tear up Swift Street and sell it to somebody to build something there. But that's not the case? No, no, we are, if, if this is proved, we will vacate that street, that portion, and right. make that property sellable. <clears throat> sellable. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't make someone build on it. No, no, I understand well, Yeah, that. we're not seeking out anyone to build it. We're no, just no. vacating it. That's what I meant. That's why I thought yeah. maybe somebody said, okay, yeah. we're gonna have somebody come in there and build something there. But I thought that whole place, that whole alley up in there was all grandfathered, in, or I'm sorry, back, across the street at 14 something. We had a property there and, and another person owns it and it's like light commercial. On the other side? Yes. Now he's got sidewalks there. Now he's gonna have proposed to have sidewalks on his side of the street, right? Yep. We're, no, we're gonna have sidewalk. We're putting sidewalks in. Just on one side? Just on the one side. Okay. Because up the street on the other side, there's a big um, gully. Yeah. And we're not, we can't put a sidewalk there without no. doing some major improvements. I just wonder if it'll take away from the, the drainage and everything if you build up Fairmont Street to our properties, you know what I mean? And the guy on the corner and me and, yeah, you know, <clears throat> you see how broke up the street is, but that's not the point we're talking about, is that if you raise it up from Swift Street up, mm -hmm. okay, so it's going to be steeper there, right? It's going to well, be the same grade, approximately the same grade. What, what the proposed design is, it's taking the curve at uh, Peters that's now about 40 foot in length and lengthening it out to 150 to increase the sight distance as you're coming over. Now are you flattening the intersection? And it, it's lengthening the vertical Instead curve. Instead of going out. like this, you're gonna gradual? 
Yes. Kind not, of. Yes. We're not lowering Peter's intersect. Okay. Using up the street to help right. match. That's what I wondered about because I know I was born and raised in that neighborhood, and people used to fly over the top of that hill. Yeah. They I was going to say they they still do. And they still do. Yeah, so hopefully this will take, take that away. Both yeah. this, 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 come on up the microphone, though, so that we can record, okay? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Okay, that's what I just wondered about. See, nobody said in this proposal, it said here, you know, to vacate at Swift Street, and there was no explanation on, on uh, the, the raising it up or anything like that. So that's my question. And the guy across the alley there, or street, he was asking the same thing, but he had to go somewhere. And... You know, they say, okay, we have access. You're going to put a turnaround in that alley. I'm sorry, yes. in uh, the Swift. Be the west side of Swift or just a Hammerhead. short wall? It'll be like a cul de sac. That's a circle. Right. Got it. Well, Hammerhead's a little out, out of a, it's Got not it. quite a perfect circle, but it'll be that. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And all the, all the grading, it'll be all up to coach. You know what I mean by yeah. that? Got it. All right. We just wondered about it because we didn't get any information on what you guys were going to do. And they're going to keep on going to transit then, right? From there? Oh, from Vine to transit, yes. They're going to take doing all the whole that out. Section. Yeah. They're take Fairmont from Vine to transit out and redo everything. Yes. Wow. Um, okay. Sewer and water and everything. I didn't see that on here. I do not. Okay. I, I can't. Okay. Oh, come on up. And, <laughs> sir, Thank you. Sir, and if your neighbor that wasn't able to be here has any questions, he can contact That's staff. why he told me to ask it about his property across the street. See, and I go, yep. okay. And I if he has know. more questions, city staff uh, can answer. Is okay. he the one Thank that you. owns the garage? Huh? Is he the one that owns that garage? Right. Yeah. Yeah. His property, uh, yeah, the, he'll still have a driveway. We're putting in a driveway. That's what I meant, too. He says, yeah, I wonder if they'll block up my driveway. See, he's got to cut out for the driveway. It's pretty right. construction. That one, that'll probably move down just a little bit or up the street right. a little bit. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Come on up. Do you want to talk? Now you can come up, sir. <laughs> All right. Anyway, can you show me you just name and address your... again, please, if you would? Uh, mine's 2623 Peters Avenue. I'm right on the corner. Name? Newman. Gary. First, thank you. Yep. You just need it for follow-up. No, know. that's fine. Yep. Which one's yours? That's mine right there. That one right there. Yeah, anyway, uh, since you got the pictures up, because it'll remind me what, the, you know, what I want to talk about here, mm -hmm. are they going to remove the telephone pole? Since they're going to be, because no. uh, on here it looks like they're going to be rounding the corners off. We are going to round the corners off. Uh, but it will have to be moved a little bit, I think. A yes. little bit? Yeah. You mean they, they take all them wires and all? No, they'll move the pole. Which way is the pole moving? To the oh, east? Uh, I'm we, sorry, the west or the north? We haven't had those discussions with. The, I would say it'd have to be west because there's really no place to move it east. I mean, that's probably only about no, two it's feet. Not gonna, it's not going to move east. It's either going to move west or north a little bit. Oh, west or, oh, oh west or north. Right in the middle of your driveway that okay. you thought was yours. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you thought it was your driveway. Well, I just, you know, according to this, it does say on here that, that it is in conflict. There that he it says my driveway is in conflict. Yeah, I bet it is. And that's why I'm wondering about how, how wide they're going to well, make Well, this the is corner. your this is your parking area? This is my parking right it's there. It's not your driveway. This is No, my driveway's on the other side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's just so, kind of a private but, parking I have right there. Right. So that's going to be, we are going to have to move that over a little bit. Okay. Move what over now? We're going to be putting the um, sidewalk ramps right there. Okay. Sidewalk what? Ramps. Oh, you mean the little yellow things? Yeah, the that yellow you... domes. Oh, they'll be sitting like right, right on the corner? Yes. Oh. On both okay. corners. Even if you don't have a walk? They're putting a walk in East. Yeah, you're getting oh, a new walk there. Walk. No, you're not. No, I'm not. No, no, no. no, no That's no. on the other side of the Up street. Up the street. It's going to cross here, right there behind that stop sign. It's going to cross to right where your pickup is or okay. near that. And then it's going to cross... Fairmont across the street, and that sidewalk is going to go up the whole east side of Fairmont. Is there a way to cross right there on the right behind the stop sign uh, instead of going across and across? The stopping site distance isn't adequate. Oh, I got you. That makes sense. That, that, no, 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 no. Yeah. Then the person crossing. Yep. You wouldn't see that. Down. It makes sense. Right. So will that take out I get part that. of my cedar fence? That's yes. Sitting on the yes, it will. This will fill that. Part. All right. How much of it do you know? Britain. I mean, how do you know uh, if I'm going to come in? No, I let's see here. Coming up that hill, going, going to the come. south. Uh, can you tell me? Are they taking any dirt out of there and widening it, or is it just a? Uh, or is the street still going to be the same width? The oh, coming, coming up the same coming width. Up the yes. Oh, okay. So you're not taking anything off. No. Off the coming down. 
probably. Well, actually level this adding of this fill. All right. Well, actually you level off a little bit more. You know what I mean? If you filled in a little bit higher. For sure. Yeah, not, uh, not, not at this moment. Driving a truck, so it's like we'll, they'll leave the fencing there for you. To, once it's marked up, we'll, we're going to have once these details are nailed down, mm. if it gets approved by council, yeah. we're going to have a public meeting on this. Well, his fence is going to have to go to have a sidewalk there, Gordon. Yeah, well, just the cu first couple of yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. but he's going to lose okay. some sidewalk. They kind of look like that. I mean, they're pretty close on the uh, right. on the sheet there. I could tell that maybe one or two sections were going to get. Uh, you know, maybe knocked off, but uh, okay, right. all right. So yeah, and then there will be a public meeting and they'll show schematics and all of that oh, stuff. okay, gotcha, all right. And that's usually held in the neighborhood. We'll have it at just wondering how morning much it's gonna be shaved off, you know? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I use every bit of it, you know? But, uh, yeah, though, you, even you, though you it is a city, so I still yeah. use every yeah. bit Yeah, you might have to scoot that, your rocks yeah. over. Yeah. This is just conceptual at this point. It's not yeah. designed yet. No. So we didn't want to go too far down that road until sure. you guys had a chance. Yeah. So in other words, I'll see this again yes. as far yes. as uh, When's the, it best? they really get down to the detail? Of the, what more, yes. If oh. it gets approved tonight, oh. yes, we're going to get in more detail. And okay. And don't forget, this is, a, this is a bus route, too, because I drove a city bus and this was my corner. So the bus is <laughs> always on that corner, yeah. you know, Fairmont. And it's also a city. You know, fire trucks, yes. uh, all that other stuff. And uh, I actually almost got stuck on that hill once because I, you have to come over the top and sit because if you rest any further oh. down, you know, like if there's ice yep. or snow, then you have trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, and me and Billy, we've seen, well, countless accidents on this corner. And that's what we're trying to improve. Yes. The and sight distance for everything. A lot of the so college kids coming from Morningside, they go over the top of this hill and they go right through the stop sign. And you got people coming up the north, you know. Mm -hmm. Must be those Briar Cliff kids them. that are coming out to Morningside. Huh? That's what it is. No, it's a dangerous. Oh, it's a dangerous it's Morningside kids. I had a year of that. Be two us. years ago, a college kid <laughs> awesome. came right Lots through the stop trouble. sign, and he T-boned a gal and her two kids. And I mean, he hit her right in the driver's side door. And I'm, she's lucky she wasn't killed because it smashed it all in. She was pretty shook up. The two kids went to the hospital. It is a dangerous corner. I don't even know why so you go when strong. When something gets done, it'll be, uh, it'll be a good one. When, when is this bid? Uh, hopefully, uh, we're shooting for December. Okay, so there'll be some meetings in between okay. now and then. Anyone and else this, be heard? Yeah, and maybe this hill. I mean, I can tell with the concrete where they're kind of cutting it off. Mm -hmm. That's Billy lives right on the other corner, on the, uh, the east side. But they could, it probably wouldn't hurt if they could go up oh, a little bit further that as far as the concrete because yeah. it's a pretty bad, I mean, there's potholes you know, all the way up to the top of the hill. So if they could replace oh, he lived, that. Oh, he's got that block wall one? No, he's got, he's across the street. Oh, the behind us. He's across the street <laughs> right one. there. But if you look at the street, yeah. I mean, it's pothole city all the way up until about the top of the hill. So. Hey, in all, could, in all fairness, they're all filled. The street, right. We have a new nickname. Anyway, that's all I got to all say. Right. I guess. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yep. Come on up, sir. Oh. Well, either. Oh. oh, that's Billy. No, yeah. Oh. William Majors, 1506 South Fairmont. That's the picture right there. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Street does need some repair. And I would like to see it come up a little higher, like to the, to the crest of the hill, <coughs> than what was proposed in the paper. Hey, raising Peter's? No, new. This uh, the just the street. Oh, oh, okay. But the I, think, I think there's uh, voids under the street by that telephone pole there in my yard. They're up there? Well, we'll send someone out there to look, you know, With check it out. Ground penetrator? Drill a hole? I don't know what they'll be doing, but yeah. But we'll send someone out there to take a look. I like, I like the design in the project. So it'll, it'll be better. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Skip Shasso and uh, address I, Skip. Pardon me? Address please. Uh, 1453 South Fairmont. Thank and you. And 1421 South Fairmont. Um, I own the property on both sides of Swift. Oh. Okay. And I'm sorry for being late, but I That's just got okay. off work. Okay. 
And so you may have answered my questions already. Those two green, right. green ones? Yep. Right. Uh, and I guess what I'm wondering is, I heard something about they're raising the grade. Is that what you're doing? Yes. Okay, and how high are you raising the grade? Uh, on your south property, which is right there where the cursor is, that one's going to go up about four and a half feet. So it'll go down into your property. Okay. And then the south one is probably what, about four and a half, couple feet. How much? A couple feet, two. A couple feet. Okay. Yep. And then are you taking out Swift Street? Yes. And then what happens to that property that's under Swift? Well, if, if it all gets approved, we're going to vacate it, and then we'll be able to sell it. It would be available for you to purchase. Okay, so it doesn't get grandfathered into the uh, land it, rights. On the, the people that have the the people that are on either side have first option to buy. And it sounds like I'm you're on. Side. Yeah, you're on. That's side. what I'm saying. You, so you have option. The, our city policy is, you have first right of refusal on that. Okay, that's all I got. Okay, Thank you. thanks, Yep. Anyone else? Okay, ready to vote? Yes. One more question. Yeah. Oops. The, the come, to, come to the microphone, please. The very center of Fairmont and Peters, will that point stay at that grade, or can that come down half a foot or a foot? Uh, I believe that's staying about the same. Isn't it? It's staying about the same. Uh, the grade coming down Peters is too steep to adjust the grade of South Fairmont at the intersection. <laughs> oh, but it, it affects, negatively affects the other street. A little. So. Passes 5-0. Thank you for guys for coming. Thanks. Uh, 23 is a resolution approving an assignment and assumption of the master lease for Cedar Rapids <coughs> Bank and Trust for the Badrill Building. I'll move that. Second. Anyone to be heard? Yeah. Marty, we still have four or five people interested. When, how soon are we going to get this bid out so we can get rid of the property? Closing, which I think is tomorrow. Any we'll reason we don't have those documents already in the mail? Mr. City Attorney? With the closing? Oh, yeah. No, the documents for like the developer. Our... Let's, let's don't. Uh... As soon as economic development gets us the name. Uh -huh. have... You have to do an RFP. You have to do that. Still have strong interest. So. What's that? We still have strong interest in it. So. Well, let's get an RFP out and get her gone. We don't need to sit on it at all if we don't for any length of time. So. When can the council expect that RFP to be ready? I guess I'm going to ask that question to put pressure on you and the legal department. Weeks, probably too late for next week, but we can do it the week after that. All right, let's get her done. I'm right, Amber? <laughs> I'm okay. Send those out without council. Yeah, you can send those out without, you only need us to approve bring it. Bring back to council. We'll bring that back to council. Karen, maintenance of the Mayor public. Mayor Council, before we go on, if you recall, we had had an item to hire Hunden Associates to write the RFP. Oh, yeah. So that's what will be coming back in two weeks. Yeah, it bothers me if we knew that we had title insurance and knew we knew we had, we knew we had this thing coming down the pike. We should have already had the agreement ready to go in the mail. Their citizens are concerned, and rightfully so. What are you buying the Badro building? I've tried to, everyone I've talked to, I've tried to tell them, listen, we've got four or five people that are interested in this project. The way you minimize that fear in this community is to get that agreement out as quick as you can and get this thing awarded and get it reconstructed. But it wasn't their concern before. We were going yeah. to go forward with it, but it was the cost of the company. Yeah. Three weeks ago, we knew that we could get title <clears throat> insurance. We knew we were going to get possession. We knew all of that three weeks ago. Nobody on this council said we're not going to do the deal. So now we got some guy that I still haven't figured out why we're spending twenty-five or thirty thousand bucks with him to do an RFP because of the historic tax credits yeah. and stuff. No, that was the deal that we hired out of Omaha. That was the reason we hired the Omaha attorney was to clarify the tax credits. It's an entirely different argument. Oh. Sorry, Mar sorry, Alex, but that's not the case. Well, there there were a few um, title issues that came up in the last couple of weeks that 
cause us to kind of have to wait a little bit. Once for... you knew the title insurance was well, purchased, we said we'll buy the building. So anyway, well, I think we could have we could have the agreement on for Monday. We have it all done. It's been it was deleted, if, so we have it. We could put it right back on. Well, let's get it on here and get it going. All right. We yes, we we do have that ready to go, so we yeah. can bring that back on Monday. Let's, it's okay. let's get it out there and let's see okay. what we get. The vote in. I think everyone's excited about the project. The vote's not in. Now it is. The discussion wasn't <laughs> done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out, Lisa. The discussion wasn't done yet. Hey, you weren't the I was only just one. just answering the question. Passed by zero. <laughs> 24 is care and maintenance of public right of way in relation to city projects and maintenance activities. Greetings again. Yes, <laughs> back again. This one is in relation to the Fairmont project. It brought a little bit to point uh, to our attention that there are a lot of improvements in some of these streets that we have here at the city and I just wanted to go over them, a few of them with you so we're all on the same page and uh, when this does, these do come up that we're all treating everybody the same. So, um, what the problem is we have, a lot of people will put these private imp uh, improvements in the right of way which they don't realize how far the right of way is. A lot of people will think that the right of way starts at either the back of the curb or the back of the sidewalk. That's not always true. Sometimes it projects farther onto the property, onto, I use air quotes because it's not actually their property. It's the city. When you, when you do this, I see lots of mailboxes here. Are you gonna put them on a corner then? Make them go get their mail or are you gonna leave the mailboxes? Only during construction, though, we will replace the mailbox. Well, sometimes but, you don't. Sometimes you may, you go to a corner right. box. Uh, well, and we, we check with the post office on that. If they request that and the neighborhood wants it, we go forward with that. Okay. A lot of the, mail, the, the fancy type of mailboxes and ornamental ones with all the bricks and everything else, we don't replace those. We give those back to the people. We will replace the mailbox with a standard metal mailbox on a four by four pressure treated post and put that in there. That's all we replace with. That's our standard. Uh, some of the other improvements that we, uh, I just put <coughs> code on there. Uh, this is already in our municipal code. Uh, so if we do want to change it, we'd have to change it all the way down to that. Um, some of these improvements can be retaining walls, such as this one right here on the corner of Peters and Fairmont. The right-of-way line is actually, as you see in the other picture, it's back 13 feet. Yeah, no, 13. yeah. Um, their their properties, well, it, that their their block wall is like six and a half feet into the right-of-way. And so where's the sidewalk? Which side's it going? The, the sidewalk's going on both sides of that property. It's, that one's going to be rebuilt that you see there to approximately their fence line, their chain link fence line. And then it'll, be, it'll come out because we're widening that radius. And then <clears throat> a, a sidewalk will be put on their west side of their property. So are you going, going to north. put a retaining wall to hold that dirt from up above? We will have to put in a small retaining wall on our side to hold that back. On the west? On the, on the east side of the sidewalk, which will be on yeah. the east side yeah, of the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. West side of his property. Right, west side of his property. Build a retaining wall, I don't know how else you can do it, so. Right. Uh, and for instance, on this one here, this improvement, we could make the uh, property owner remove it at their expense, but we will be removing what we need to to grade that back so we can improve that site distance. As you can see, stopping right there at that stop sign, you, you can't see very far down, up the street on Fairmont, which is down the hill. So that'll be graded back, and they'll, they'll, we'll take that block wall out, some of that, not all of it, just to about where that cursor was. Go back. Yeah, right around there somewhere. Yeah, you think it'll stay up if you take that wing oh. off of it? Yeah, and we'll, we'll have to tie it back a little bit. It's dangerous. But the, the, any remaining brick, will, of course, will be 
for them that's theirs unless they want us to remove them. Gordon, what's your best guess for how long that retaining wall's been there? <laughs> Just a wild guess. Ten years? Wouldn't even want to guess. A long uh, time. That's a newer style brick. So it is. I'd say about 10 15 years. 10, 15 years. Okay. It's those stackable ones, landscape ones. It's not from the 70s, that's for sure. Well, that's the importance of having neighborhood meetings where you tell them exactly what's going to happen on their property. We've not been very good about that around here. So We are going to do that with these properties. Go to the next slide here. Here's another example on Fairmont that is oh, we are going to steer clear from this as much as possible on these two properties. Uh, what's that, 1604 and 1600. That 1600 one has two tiers of um, railroad tie walls, as you can see there on the left photo. And they're both in the city right of way. We the don't lower want, and the upper? The upper, yeah, the lower and the upper. And this guy, the, the guy at 1604, has those concrete steps all the way down to the sidewalk. Almost 100% almost of those stairs are in the city right away. Again, we have, at this location, we're actually shifting the road to the west just a little bit so that we don't have to bother with either one of those home improvements. Uh, only because we can. Some locations we can't. We can't move the street at all. We can't do anything about it. But we are going to try to avoid doing any kind of improvements on that at all. Some of the the plants, the course that they have there, in their in their planter box, we will not be replanting those. Uh, we'll set the grades, and if they want seed, we'll put seed down, as in grass seed. If we have to remove any block walls, or uh, I'm sorry, retaining walls. Those will be graded back, and they'll have to replace the block wall at their expense. This is what our intention is. This is the way we've been doing it. Um, other things that we are talking about are walkways and carriage, the, the carriage walks and the stairs. <clears throat> yeah, did we have a picture of that? I thought we did. I thought I put one on there. But uh, those ones are between the sidewalk and the street that lead up to the front door of the house usually, such as those stairs. We're gonna try and match those when they're in the right of way. If we ever have to go onto private property for these improvements, of course we will fix whatever we have to or whatever we would damage for those. Uh, you do? Yeah, throw on a stair picture. Because there's a couple, <coughs> like right there, the stair, that one. That one we're gonna to have to match up those stairs and we'll have to make, do as best we can without rebuilding the whole thing all the way to the house. So another one there, that one will be fairly. But they didn't do anything wrong there. That happens all over town. You got to yeah. get to the sidewalk <coughs> with another sidewalk nope. and if you have to step it, you got to step it. So we're, we're not saying there's anything wrong with those so, at all. I mean, That's, I don't see why this is any different than any other place you've been. The only ever, so. We're just listing over the different improvements that we right. are going to replace. Right, well you got to, you got to match it up, so. Right, uh, such as the walkways and carriage walks to the right-of-way line, uh, stairs to the right-of-way line as well. Retaining walls will be installed only to accommodate the sidewalk, such as that one on the corner of Peters, and for ADA ramps. That's a new one, you didn't used to do that. Glen Avenue, you didn't do it until until we complained dramatically when you left those. So that, I think you have to do that. I, the way we left Glen Avenue at first was just totally unfair. So that uh, neighbor doesn't want that ADA walk necessarily if it's gonna tear up his yard. So you should do everything you can to accommodate him. Mailboxes, again, we talked about that. Landscaping, we will just grade that back and seed it. If they want to do anything different with trees or plants or decorative stuff, that's on them. And, of course, sprinklers at this point, you know, we don't. We give them warning, cap them off, 
and we will not replace those. They, they'll do that on their own expense, unless you guys all say otherwise. So. I just wanted to go over those different improvements just to make sure we're all on the same page so when people do come in. It's just a challenge. Yeah, people are going to be fired up, I understand, but just got to right. try to be as equal as we can. So, Gordon, this actual project will take place physically 2021 this spring? Yes. So there will be one or a series of public meetings so well, that we'll everyone knows what's going to happen to their property. Right. That's great because it gives those, them a good year and a half to get ready in their mind. Yes. We, once we get nailed down the, the property, um, the design, I'm sorry, see that we're going to start meeting with some of these homeowners that are affected mm -hmm. immensely, like those people on the four corners of Peters. That one's a special case. Right. Such as the gentleman that was here parking in the right of way. We'll be meeting with them. The one, his neighbor across the street who has... Uh, his fence will have to be relocated and pulled back. It's quite, it's impeding the site distance quite a bit. Well, this will give them the chance to plan for what they need to do, if it's a fence or if it's, you know, plants or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. They'll still be excited. At least I would be. New street. You know where you've had it. No, but where you've had something in place for 30, 40 years, and then you're pulling it back. It's like, I know. come on, Gordon, can't we leave it where it's been for 40 years? I understand. Why are you taking my decorative mailbox down and replacing it with something that's unsightly and that's that's very? That's not as bad as when they say they're moving them all to the corner. Very plain. Well, yeah. no, but I, I know the complaints you get, and, and and some are valid. I mean, you know, you're changing something that's been in place for years, and it's been their home, and now you're coming in. And that decorative box, you're going to give it to them. Yes. And it, if they give yeah. it back to you, you're going to install that one back. If they install it, that's they've got to install it back. Oh, they'll have to install they, they it. They can do it on their own dime. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're not. They have to install it back. A lot of them are. I don't even think some of those are even legal right away, are they? Yeah, they're not supposed to have some of those. Some can you imagine just, someone hits that with a car? Well, they have or, to be or a ball bat. I'm sorry, what? Or a ball bat. Right. A lot of them are yes, put up because ball of a ball bat. bat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. But they're still though. supposed to be breakable. We don't do that anymore. No, I don't. <laughs> well, other people do. Go ahead, Skip. Um, I guess as long as I'm here, I wanted to uh, make sure you guys are aware that I also have property on Lynn Street, just south of uh, Vine. And in that area, there's a uh, creek that runs through there, and there's a tunnel that goes under the road. Well, the, uh, the road is collapsing. I called the uh, city about three years ago and talked to the street department and that and told them that the road was collapsing. As a matter of fact, it even has gone down so much it's pulled my sidewalk down and I had to repair my sidewalk also it was so that uh, it would be in compliance with uh, the laws here. But uh, every year it keeps going down lower and now it's a big dip. And whenever it rains, if you go and look off to the uh, west side, you can see um, water just gushing out from underneath the street, going out there, so you know it's washing out. Eventually, somebody's going to go over that road and collapse and fall inside of it. But I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Like I said, about three years ago, I notified the city, and they haven't done anything about it. You know what he's talking about? We'll look into it. Okay. All right. Thank you. OK. Citizen concerns. Anyone want to be heard? Please come to the microphone. State your name and address, please. Uh, Keith Baker, Sioux City. I want to show you guys something. You ever seen these? Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, yeah. Pretty irritable, aren't they? No, I played with them all the time as a kid. Here, you want these on? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm tired of dealing with them. The government years ago, when they planted trees out there in the Riverside, they planted these damn things. This year has been the worst. I got a guy that bought a house across the street from me. It never maintains his property. 
They're about two or three inches thick. So when the wind blows, guess who gets them? I do. You guys need to start dealing with this, if you would. I've tried to go through the city. Nobody seems to want to talk to me about it. What are we going to do? Silence is golden. I had one. I cut it down myself. And it was on public right of way. But the, the city planted these. Why don't they have to cut when them did they, When did they plant them? Huh? When did they plant them? When the government went through and threw on all that urban renewal out there. I don't know how many years ago that was. Well, I can tell you I was on the council back then. It was in the 90s, but I don't, I don't think we planted trees as part of that project because we don't plant trees as part you of You know, if you guys aren't going to do anything, at least the city could go tell the property owner, clean it up a little bit. I'm tired of dealing with it. What's the address? 2023 Nash. Okay. We'll send Daryl out. I've see. already got a hold of the city. Nobody's ever returned my call. They don't care. Okay. I give them a chance to start with. So. Okay. So well, you're saying it's your neighbor's tree that's... What's shed, that? The neighbor's tree is shedding onto your property? Well, it's, it's blow, he lives across, across the street, but when the... Wind blows. And, you know, oh. in his yard, they're about two or three inches thick all over his yard. It's ridiculous. This guy doesn't maintain anything. Mm -hmm. And then they blow over to you? Yeah. And uh, is what I'm going to do. I tried to do it today, take my leaf blower and blow them back in his yard. <laughs> so I don't want to hear the city come out here, out to my house, and says you can't blow them back across the street. Well, that's where they come from. So I'm going to give them back to him. It's different than a leaf tree. I understand you can't blow those in the street. Those come out of the trees. But these come out of his trees. So I'm going to give them back to it. So I don't want to hear from anybody. Uh, you can do it by me. I'm, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> and if the cops come out there and tell me I can't do it, I'm going to tell them the same thing. They belong to him. I wish somebody would deal with this guy. I'm tired of taking care of him. Well, I think the mayor's going to pass the address along. Also, when I talk to this city, uh, guy, he said, I think they put it in the ordinance. None of these are planted be planted anymore because they wanted to put them on West 7th. And there was another graded tree that had a lot of shedding of this kind of stuff. They said, no, we're not dealing with it anymore in this city. So they must have a clue also. So let me ask you. If it's in the ordinance now that you can't plant these trees anymore or they won't, are those grandfathered in or are you guys going to have to cut them down? They must be grandfathered in, but I don't know that for a fact. But I like your idea of starting with the maintenance enforcement. That's all I'm asking. I know, and we heard you loud and clear, and we've got the address, but I think that's a good start that you're suggesting. And then if we fail there, then what's next? I don't have an answer for you. That's my silence. Give them back to him. No, but let's start with the maintenance enforcement, like you suggested. You know, I tried. That was I a, called the city. That was a good idea. And yeah. Nobody's ever responded to, it's, back to me. No. Yay and nay, or we're not going to do anything. Haven't heard anything. So. But t typically, when something is banned, it's the, whatever's in existence is grandfathered in. Typically, unless it's a danger to your health, safety. There's another thing. Welfare. Out there in Riverside. <laughs> okay. They just spent over 250000 cleaning out a storm drain between Nash and up behind the old come and go. A great big water, a between water Nash? main. Nash? Where now Nash and the old come and go? Nash and Paul. Come and go on the end of West 19th, okay. where it meets Riverside Boulevard. Okay. All the way from there, it back edge of their parking lot, clear down to Nash Street. Okay. An outfit from Sioux Falls took almost four months cleaning that out. Right now, when they raise the level of Nash Street putting down new blacktop, the storm drains are only about maybe three inches high. There's one across the street from me that's almost plugged with these. And you know where they're going, don't you? They're going to plug the sewers. Does that make any sense? That's it a, doesn't to me. That's a problem. And you know, it's it's like it's like a sewer pipe <laughs> in your house. You get one little thing caught in the sewer pipe, it's going to keep building up and building up and building up. You know a quick way to plug a sewer up? These right here. 
something to think about. Yes, thank you for that. We'll get up. We'll get somebody out there. See. I would we, appreciate see it. See what we can do. Well, if you can't do anything, you we'll know, let you, we'll let you know. <laughs> okay, we won't. Let you, you know, know. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard that before, Bob. You okay. know, yay or nay. At least you heard something. Good. You know, no response. I, I, yeah. First time I've heard about it, Keith. How do? What do you want me to do? The city manager is going to respond. Well, to you me. know, people. For, let, let me tell you something, Bob. I talked to this street division twice, and they said, "Well, he's out in the field." And the third gal I talked to said, "He's on vacation." So which is it? <coughs> is he in town or isn't he? Reliability. Don't you just love it? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Gretkin. No, sir. Thank you. Julie. I'm silent today. <laughs> well, we won't be that fortunate on the next guy. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I tell you what. Don't apologize. Thanks, Al. No, thank you. Um, no, the only, the only, the biggest thing pressing that I would bring up, I feel like I have a couple, but the only one that's front of mind right now is, and I don't know if maybe Bob, city manager, can follow up. A, f a friend of mine was um, lives in the neighborhood. I think the address is 2537 uh, South Cyprus. And if you could have inspections and Daryl's team just be able to go out there, take a look. They have mattresses and garbage and vehicles that don't run all over their property. <laughs> yes. Um, and if you can just let us know, or just if I can get an email of where. Yep. I think the city's aware because I think they went out and shut off their water today. So, okay, I'm not sure where it's at, but I would just appreciate a memo. They shut off the water. They likely red tagged. That's we'll kind of what tagged. I was wondering. So yeah, if I can just be up. Yep. And then um, on th what is it? Wednesday is that Glen Avenue public meeting. So, you guys remember we'll be there. It's back to back with another meeting though, isn't it? Um, it's at four o'clock, four to six. I'm not sure what. There's something in the evening. I don't have it on my calendar. I thought that, I thought Jessica sent us an email saying we're. Gonna... I don't have anything on my. There is one that's there is one that's back to back, but I don't. I didn't think it was Glenn, but I'm not sure. Anyway, that's all I got right now. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're fine. Just on the more. board. So get okay. plenty. What? 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 Uh, it, when, uh, oh yeah, the <coughs> SPD association meeting. What is it? The association meeting with the police. Is at seven that night. What is? The SCPD association meeting is at seven p.m. March fourth. Police union. Back to back, the police union. Well, and Glen Ave is from four to Glen six. Glen Ave is from four to six, so they're right behind each other, or that one's right behind it. We we'll get plenty of rest Wednesday night. Come into. The chambers Thursday morning. I expect a letter from me. I hope by tomorrow I'll be drafting it, reading it, or writing it tonight. You are. We have, <laughs> we have we have our operating budget. Some of your foolishness. I want to at least do a wrap up counterpoint. <laughs> You're gonna put it in writing? <laughs> Absolutely. Make it available to the press. <laughs> I just I want you to come in rested Thursday morning, not grumpy and. That's all I have. We have Too operating late. budget Too wrap up that. Thursday morning. Make sure we follow up and give Keith a call. We, I'll do that first thing tomorrow. Thank you. I'll move we adjourn. Second. Rickon? <laughs> Aye. Moore? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Dot? Oh. Aye. Waters? Aye. You go in. Your bottom line is blank. Oh. You go in. Oh. Oh. He just, he just, sorry. I'm going to have an aneurysm. Yeah, you're.